Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Winston's coming. Hold on. Okay. Turn that light on, Winston. There you go. Greetings, Winston. Yeah, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. Are you Are you hearing me? And are you seeing me? Okay. Yeah, man. Live and direct, man. All right. Uh, I'm very, very excited, and I just want to, uh, if it's okay with you, I want to to start off by just saying, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to do the interview, Winston. Um, it's just a, it's just an honor to be able to speak with you. You're welcome every time. Well, thank you so much. And, you know, music lovers all over the world, they know already. But, you know, I'm glad to remind them by way of introduction, just to say that Winston Jarrett is a legendary Jamaican singer, a pioneer of rock steady with Alton Ellis and the Flames. And then after that, with Winston Jarrett and the Righteous Flames. And then, of course, with all of your solo work over so many years, you have a career that's that's filled with, with albums. I think there's over 20 albums from what I could tell from researching. Um, right, and, right. And, and just so many hit songs. Um, so, uh, and if you don't mind me asking, just to confirm, Winston, you've been doing this you've been you've been singing professionally now for over 60 years is that true right that's right yeah so you know and and if you don't mind my further asking um winston you don't have to answer but i, I would love to know just for just to just to confirm later this year you're going to turn 82 years 82 years strong am i oh, am i wrong you're right on line man you're very right well, <laughs> at some point, maybe today, I'm going to ask you for some tips on, you know, how, as I, I think I'm still, a, you know, kind of young, I'm getting older, unfortunately, every year, and it's starting to show, but I'm going to ask you later, maybe for some tips, so you can tell everyone how you keep it so going so strong for all this time, and, you know, and I know uh, that you're, you know, as I'm going to be asking you about later, that you you're still getting up on stage and you still, you know, thrilling the people at 82 years going to be later this year strong. So we have to ask you some questions um, later about how you how you do that. Um, but um, Winston, um, there's so much ground to try to cover. I'm sorry, I have some technical issue, um, but there's so much ground to try to cover. I do think that it makes sense to start out, though, however, with the beginning and some of your early childhood days in Jamaica. Um, because, you know, you can read a lot of things and, and sometimes not everything you read is correct. So sometimes I like to try to just confirm some things. And I know I read that you were born in Lime Tree Gardens, which is a place in St. Anne's Parish in Jamaica, which I know is the same parish, I believe, as Bob Marley was also born. Is that true? Yeah, perfectly right, man. So, you know, Lime Tree Garden is one of the, 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 one of the parish that really blessed, so to speak, you know, coming from um, Bob Marley and, uh, you know, myself and um, yeah. a lot of more, a lot of other great people Marcus Messiah Gavi, you know, and uh, Winston Rodney, Burning Spear. Yeah, yeah, the great Burning Spear. Let me ask, since you mentioned, I didn't mean, I wasn't going to ask this, but since you mentioned Marcus Mosiah Garvey, um, I was just curious if you had, I'll just ask now, if you have any thoughts about um, you know, at the at the early this year, you know, during the uh, Black History Month, um, which was just last month in the United States, you know, we have this month they call Black History Month, though Black History, as we know, continues all year round. But last month, 
um, there was a lot of news, or at least there was some news about um, how uh, Marcus Garvey's son and also the country of Jamaica were, you know, trying to again convince uh, the United States government, specifically President Biden, that he should pardon Marcus Garvey or exonerate, pardon, exonerate, however you want to call it, um, for his mail fraud conviction that he still has on the books here in the United States. He still has, Marcus Garvey has a felony mail fraud conviction on the books here in the United States. And Jamaica and Marcus Garvey's son, who I believe now is 87 years old, he's a professor, um, have been trying for a number of, of administrations, presidential administrations, to say, that the United States government should post, they call it posthumously, you know, when somebody has passed away, pardon or clear their record. Um, do you have any thoughts about that? And why, why hasn't President Biden, do you think that President Biden should go ahead and do that? Well, all things are possible when it comes to truths and rights, you know, people really want to hear the truths about the history that was, uh, really happening in those days, you know? And mm -hmm. they said, uh, I think my knowledge is really hoping for that. You yeah, know? well, I mean, I think the history has showed that the only reason why Marcus Garvey has that felony conviction is because um, the FBI director, uh, Edgar Hoover, was a racist, and he didn't like the fact that Marcus Garvey was such a strong, powerful black leader in the United States, talk, you know, talking about a, a, black, a back to Africa movement and that he was going to do everything he could in his power, which was to use the full weight of the U.S. government to go after Marcus Garvey. And I just think it's a shame that our government hasn't done anything to rectify the situation. They should at least, I should have already done it, but during the lifetime of Marcus Garvey's son, I would think that they would do that. I didn't mean to bring it up, but, but since you mentioned Marcus Garvey, um, I just wanted to 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 say that. Now, um, Winston, um, I know in many interviews you have said that your mom uh, took you to live in Kingston when you were about five to six years old, so that she could work as a housekeeper for a, a white family. Uh, there in Kingston and that you were raised there, you know, starting in Kingston from the time that you were five to six years old. Is that accurate? Right. Yeah, perfectly right. You know, uh, that's what uh, that's what was really happening at that time. You know, I was very young, you know, yeah. and she was working at 16 Baltimore Avenue in halfway tree area. You know, at the time, so that's why I go to the halfway tree school right there. Yeah. And I have to leave school and come by our workplace to get lunch. You know, the three of us, me, my brother Martin and Gilbert, we have to come there and get your lunch and go back to school. Because it was very close, so you, you just walk, you don't have to take no bus, no, <laughs> nothing, it's just a couple blocks away from where the school is. Right. In the center of halfway tree, you know, yes. so I grew up, I grew up in a different, different year. And that is where my mother was to live at 54 Linda's Road, Kingston 5, not far from where she was working. And then now, my bigger brother lied. He was living down in Trench Town. He's the first one out of the six. So we have to go back and forth down in Trench Town and, you know, but after uh, we stopped going to school, you know, that's where I was really living permanently okay. in, uh, in Trench Town, uh, 24 4th Street. I can't remember the yard, the old government yard built by, uh, by the, 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 the Prime Minister at Bustam that time. Was that Bustamante? Yes. Yeah. Now, was, yeah. was Bustamante, yes. In, in an interview, um, 
that you did a long time ago with a reggae historian, a guy by the name of David Katz. He, he writes a lot about Lee Scratch Perry, who, by the way, uh, today would have been Lee Scratch Perry's, uh, uh, is his, it's his earth strong today, it's his birthday today, Lee Scratch Perry. Unfortunately, we lost him, of course. Um, yeah, I never know it was his birthday today. We give thanks for that. Uh, yeah. Upliftment, yes. Yeah. And I, I read it. Um, and so David Katz, he did this interview with you that he wrote up in a book. And um, in the interview, he quotes you. And this is what he, he this is what he said that you said. He said, you said to him, I really grew up in a Christian family, Church of God, where everybody clap hands and praise God. Read your Bible two times a day to drive vampire away. Um, and so I wanted to ask you, because I read that, was, was singing in church, um, was that your first experience really singing in public? Well, it's not really like that. You know, when you, when you, when you grew, I was very young at that time, very young, you know. And that is really true. I did say that to, 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 to Mr. Cat. Yeah. But, uh. What really happening is we only sing in the in the church at Sunday school, you know. Yeah. And uh, and there was two Sunday school I have to go. That one in Georgetown Gospel Hall with Pastor Bent, and and the other one was in in Linda's Road where I live. There was a white lady come there every Sunday, only on Sunday, and keep Sunday school because. In the yard was a, like a ghetto yard, you know, and the the, the 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 appearance of those kids in there was very uh, poor, yeah. you know. So when you come to a, into a, a a community that is very poor, you have to make sure that you, the parents, have to grow your kids at that time and let them know that there is a heavenly God, and you're not to grow unruly and grow up like an antichrist. Wow. You know, so people, people must grow them kids that, you know, the teaching that you're going to get will never depart from you. Respect. And you will grow up to be a man or a woman or a child growing up. And when you're coming up into the world, you know that you must put God first in your life. Respect, you, respect. You know, Respect, so Winston. you you can get you can grow and and get that respect from the the the, the masses mass, massive people and from God Himself. Give so thanks. you can be grow up to be somebody that people respect you as a you growing up to know that you're not going to steal, you're not going to. You're not going to take up the gun like now these youth want to first take up gun before they learn a trade. Yeah. You know, and you can grow decent, you know, and you get a good job coming out of school, you know, so you can be a good person, so to speak. Thank you so, so much for saying, thank you so for saying that. And that uplifts. I, I grow that way, you know, and what, what I learned from my mother and also my, my father, and also good people will guide you to along the way because your mother and your father alone cannot do it. Respect, you know, Res respect. You, 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 you got to have a back, somebody to back your, your, your parents, you know, to keep watching you. Respect, that you now we go good and you don't get involved with Bad people. The bad, the bad people. True. Now, Winston, in that same interview that you gave with David Katz, you also said, quote, my father was a deacon in the church, but Sundays in the dining room, he would put those 78s on the gramophone. And that's where I get all my ideas from. And so I, I when I read that, I wanted to ask you, what kind of records was your dad putting on the gramophone and playing at that time where you were getting these ideas? Well, that is really, really true. That's what really happened in my life. Yeah. 
growing up with my dad in St. Anne's, you know. Grandma phone was, uh, is the, you know, when you're a kid and the first time you ever watch a gramophone built by RCA Victor. Wow. With, yeah. that, with that long, long arm, like it's the arm. I've only seen it in a picture. I told Dwight Pinkney recently, asked me if I ever saw a gramophone. I said only in a picture. Well, my father, well, I was, I, I, I know I saw it by myself with my eyes. Wow. My, own, my eyes. And, and that's why I can tell the story now that people can really understand. In those commercial, colo, so to speak, I would say colonial days. Yeah. When things was really hard, yeah, hard on people lifestyle, yeah. you know, you you see your father playing a gramophone with the needle. You have a little bean, a small little box with the needle, them all inside of it, wow. and he take it out because every time he play, put in the needle, and he playing on that seventy eight, it just keep bumping and bumping up wow. and jumping up, but it wow. it don't it not scratching. But wow. it's just the way that it play, you wow. know? And then now, every time the needle get blunt, you have to take it out and throw it away, put in a new one, you know? Wow, that's a lot so, of work. That's yes, a lot of work. A lot of work. But the music was so good. What were I, you listening to? What were, what can I, you remember I, listening I, to? You know, those, the, those singers like, you know, in my head now to really call the names of the the singer because some of them are are instrumentally true, yeah. You know, like some of them maybe maybe Fox Dam, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And some some entertainers were way back Did, to remember the name of them now in my head. You was know, it a com um, was it a combination of Jamaican and also American? No, no, music? no, 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 not Jamaican music. No, They're just all, American. Just American music. Okay. All American, you know. Yeah. So it was a experience for me at that time. But maybe I was just about five, six. Did Did anyone else in your family? Either your your father, your mother, anyone in your extended family too was anyone a singer too like you? Did anyone professionally or or play an instrument? No, 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 not at all. You were the not only one who had that that musical that talent. dream. It for me, it was just a dream. Yeah. To you know, because I remember in Kingston, uh, my mother was uh, you know. I remember like one of my brother, my brother that followed me. Yeah. He, he, maybe he still maybe one shilling. You know, it's he said he'd find it in the yard, but at the same time it was not like that. So my mother was very upset about it. Yeah. Figure out that uh, but it, it really I feel uh, we was coming from church in that one night. And we saw a man was into a dark corner with his car break down. And he said he, he lost his key for the car yeah. and was tumbling there and asked us to help him to look for it. Yeah. And we, we find it and give him. And I think wow. he gave us two shillings. Wow. And wow. then now at that time, my mother was standing there watching. Yeah, and when we get that money now, she didn't really see when she didn't give us the money. But we, you know, as a kid, we put it in the pocket, yeah. and the next day, you know, when we go home, we hide it under our house bottom <laughs> because we couldn't make the mother see it. Yeah, you know, and then now we share it up like we give uh, my brother like uh, four, four pence, and yeah. we get two pence. I mean, I better get a a fi a, a fip, fip huh. is chopins. Wow. Fip is chopins, and then when we go to school now, we can buy a snowball. Yeah. Or you know, go to a bakery and then you you buy some steel toto. You call them some cake <laughs> called toto. So you get two and a half. You know. Wow. 
when we launch because my mother couldn't afford to give me more than penny. One yeah. penny for your lunch, so you go to school and buy a penny lunch. Those are from some... the government set it up that way. You Those could buy some... a penny lunch. Wow, you know? some olden days. Winston, did 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 they, even though none of your family was in, as like had that same dream of music as you, did they in, did they encourage you, your mother and your father and your brothers and sister? Did they say, did they think that was a good idea when you started to sing and just to be in your yard and when you met up with Alton Ellis? And then it was, I'm about to ask you a lot of questions about, but when you started to get into music, did your family think, did they say, you know, encourage you, that could be a good idea for you to pursue as a career even? Did they think that was a good idea? Well, uh, the, the question that you're asking, you know, is more than one question answer to that yeah i remember i told her that when i was good my mother was taking us to jail because she figured out that money that we stole steal it yeah which we didn't really stole it i told yeah. her how we come by it yeah but she believed we stole it and then she was carrying us to the halfway tree uh police station to make the police lock we up for the night wow for the night. that's tough love but, yeah, but when we was going on up the road, she asked me what what we want to be when we grow up. Yeah. You know, I told her, Mama, I want to sing. You know, she said, you really want to do that? I said, yes, Mama. But the second question now, when I grew up in Trenchtown, yeah. with, uh, in the in the uh, 24 4th Street, was lived, there was a good friend of mine in there named Gossie. I remember him said to me when Alton Ellis uh, and Eddie was singing together as Alton and Eddie. Yeah. And Eddie, and Eddie perhaps leave and come to America here to make turn fireman. You Didn't know? he? I, I heard you tell the story. Minute, sorry, I, yeah. I'm going to come back to you. Yeah, go ahead. And then, and then now he was crying. Alton was crying, and Gossie said, "Why well, you don't go to Alton Ellis and ask him?" to form the group. So I really go to him and, and, and put, it, put it to him and he said, yes. But he come back three weeks after, I, I think, and he told me, yes, he, he, he agreed to do that. So the question, that I come to the question you asked now, we see yeah. people in the yard really, really was, uh, complaining about, uh, they weren't complaining, they was happy. Uh, they was really happy to know that Alton Nellis come back and said yes. So yes. we formed the group, you know. So people in the yard would really like us, happy to know that uh, we, we, uh, we have the group and we're gonna sing and you know, and they encourage us nice. to really go forward with it, you know, like nice. you're asking the question now. So nice. I think mm -hmm. that uh, uh, give a answer to what you're saying. Yeah, for sure. Now, did did um, I read and you said earlier, you know, that I believe you, you lived on on Fourth Street and that's in the is that is that in the that's the Jonestown section of Kingston is that true no 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 no, no. Jonestown is a different it, it's different area okay yeah maybe I didn't very know. close just the border maybe you know I look a border uh, in between there yeah Jonestown and and Trenchtown so you can just walk up the road and you go over Jonestown you come back you're very in close in a, close yeah, very close, very it's close. close. It's very yes, close. Very, very close, yes. And then what about where is that in relation to I've heard you talk about before, uh Tivoli Gardens and Battle Wall. Where is where are those places? In well, relation you call that the uh, inner city. Yeah. The inner city of Kingston. Yeah. Downtown. Like you're going to the seaside. Okay. You, you will find that era, Spanish Town Road, yeah. Darling Street. You know, Matches Lane and Luke Milk Lane. You know, all yeah. those areas is near to downtown. And down 
Yeah. So uh, in that way, here on uh, and Spanish Town Road and uh, Ebenezer Lane, right there you find that area them call Baca Wall. Nice. Yes. yes, and then now uh, Siago in his time changed the name to Tivoli Garden. Okay. And he, he demolished all those uh, little tattoo, you call them tattoo, poor people house, and make up a better house, a housing scheme, you know, for the people. So that's where you, in that area you call it Bakawal and Akiwa. And thank you for that. And I so appreciate that. And now, you, when you became friends um, with Alton Ellis and you met him in that yard, um, you know, uh, he was already locally famous, right? He was already singing, as you said, I think, with uh, Eddie Perkins, but they were already kind of locally famous. True? Yes. Yeah. They were really famous, yeah. so to speak, at that time, you know, because it's, they're all doing recording and all those songs, you know, them, I think one of the songs, Oh, if I had a pair of wings Over the prison walls I fly Until I found that one I love Wow. So well, Muriel. That song? Is that called, is that the song, song Muriel? Is that song, soft. Not, not skia, not skia, and it's not reggae. Soul, soul is, music. Is that the song, um, Winston, is that the song Muriel? Is that the song called Muriel? Yes, yes. That and that they sang that for uh for Coxon, didn't they? Yes, yes, they sing it for Coxon. Um, now um, you know Eddie Perkins when he you know when he left um and then you know uh you as you say um you 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 approach Alton Ellis and you asked him about forming a group together and then you and him and Edgar Gordon who I believe is also known as Baby G. Right, um, right. That, um, you know, you guys, can you, can you tell the story kind of, of how it is, I understand you approach Alton Ellis after they, um, you know, his singing partner goes to the US and, you know, uh, and you asked him whether he wanted to form a group with you. Um, and, and then, and then the group forms. Is that the story of how it, how how Alton and the Flames begins? It's not him asking me to form. It's me asking us to form the group. Yeah. If he could, you know, he, if he could think it over. Yeah. For us to come together and form the group. Yeah. Let him said yes. And right. And, yeah. Not not right away. Oh no, yeah. Couple of weeks after that, he yeah. come back and give me the answer. He thought about it for a little while. He for thought a while. about it before, yes. And and what I was gonna say is that right away though, you guys scored some giant hits. Um, I mean you had some tunes that were amazing number one hit songs. You know, at the end of the ska into rock steady area, you had these songs like Cry Tough, you had Girl I've Got a Date, Dance Crasher, The Preacher, Rock Steady. Drew I Cover, mean, I, and Drew Cover. Yeah, Drew Cover. And, and, and Wise Birds Follow the Spring. All of them were number one and, hit songs. And Ain't That Loving You, all, yes. And... All those songs are so wicked to this day. They're giant hits. They were giant hits in their time. But I want to focus for just a second, Winston, on one of them for a quick moment because I, I had I listened to it so many times. The song "Cry Tough," and people can Google it up on YouTube and they can listen to the original 45 that was recorded at Treasure Isle for Duke Reed, of course. And if you do look it up, you'll see that. Alton and you and Baby G were backed by the legends Lynn Tate with Tommy McCook and the right, Super, right, Super Sonics. Perfectly right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 
and and I was listening to it, um, the the song, and um, undoubtedly, you know, because the musicians are so good, it's such an amazing song. But also the lyrics to the to the song, um, I, I figured out that you know when I listened to it, that is the lyrics really that make that song for me anyway, in my opinion, is such a genius song, it's so special. I mean, at the time you guys were so young, you were these young virile men, but you're singing this song where you're, you're cautioning the listener, you're saying, you know, you, you know, you're getting older, you're getting slower, and you're demanding to know, given that the, the listener, the man is getting older and slower, how can he be feel that he's tougher than the world? And he's just crying tough. It, well, you know, all that song, to put that lyrics together because in strength on we're living among the good, the bad, and the ugly. Wow. And then you now you have some guys you now that really is very bad. You know, sometimes you see them do some things, man. It make your heart move. Wow. Why some people would really, you know, cherish badness. Yeah. Wow. You know? So there was a guy that uh, you know I'm there you have an, a, a theater there named the Ambassador Theater was yeah. was there too. We used to go there, Ken Booth, me and other I, I, Alton and Bonnie and Scully and a lot of us used to go to that theater because we could watch have a, a we could watch movie inside of our own at that time, you know, you have to go to the theater to watch to watch movie, you know. There wasn't a Netflix. There was no Netflix. No. Yeah. And then no. At that time, no, you find out so there was a guy there you know, named Little Roy. Was a bad guy, you know. As you come out of the movie, he killed a man same time, right there, coming out of the theater. And then you now we write that song off for him. Wow. How can a man be be tough, tougher than the world? Wow. And if he's tough, he's against the world. You so know? that song is really about him in a way. It is about him, yes. Wow, Winston, that's such that's so I didn't I was so curious about it. And um, you know, um Despite the fact, I guess, that, that, that you guys had all these hit songs together, um, it's so curious to me, and I had to ask you about it, um, you know, Alton, Alton and the Flames, it only la the, the group only lasted for, I believe, like two and a half years before Alton decided to go to the United Kingdom, to the UK, and I was curious, I wanted to ask you, why, if you guys were so successful, you know, why did Alton decide to, to you guys were, 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 were knocking it out of the park every song? So why did he decide to go to the UK and leave the group like that? Well, I'm going to give you the truth from my heart, you know, yeah. my heart speak, you know, not about me, it's what my heart tell me right now. I was thinking of that to why I'm leave. Is only him could tell you, but I, I could give you close to that answer. Why yeah. I'm leave. Yeah. It's because, uh, uh, you know, people, most artists is not him alone. Leave. I, I am here too. Right now speaking to you. Yeah. People ask me the same question. Why I leave Jamaica and come here? But, my experience, and for me, I would tell you that we would love our career, career to go further in life. Yeah. You know, because them say star, stars is the limit. Yeah. You know, and Jamaica is very a small country. Yeah. You know, how far you think you can go with your career in Jamaica? That makes a lot of sense, Winston. You know, we want to go to another, put it to another level. You know, he, and then now, uh, I think that's what he he really want did, wanted. You know, I, to because you know you're not getting no good good response from the the people. Also, you're not getting paid for your work. 
which is one of the main thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, the exploitation. Yeah. The infringement yeah. of your copyright. Yeah. So many things are happening, you know, into a small country like Jamaica. Even the government don't really give you no honor. Good people, good people is just good people. And you see, when you find good people, what I find out now, that people only use you. Wow, true. Good people, yeah. they only use you. They're not giving you no credit, wow. no respect, no honor. Them only know to the fact that if you come up and you'll be successful, they can use you. Wow. Until they refuse you. Wow. You know? And they wow. will suck you dry did, and spit you out. Did like did, a vampire. You know, no. you're not getting no the honor that you're supposed to get. No. The respect. No, we, you know, we, as good people, because when you find good people. I feel me feel and I say they think they should cherish you. Respect. Winston, did 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 when I know you've had many, many years to think on this, and you know, Alton Ellis passed away, I believe, around in 2008. Um, and so you know, lots of time has passed um since of course those days when you guys were singing as a group together for that period of time when you had those hits, but did when that happened when when he left to the uk and you guys broke up as a group was it did you all have bad feelings or was everything cool you know did were you able to maintain the friendship or was there a rift because he left the group like that and there is so much question answer to you ask that question but there is so many answers to be answered yeah in that same little question that you ask yeah you know it, people ask a, a lot of time that question ask me that yeah but if you really look all the groups all the groups that were singing at that time is the same thing happening yeah they break up they break up. Yeah. Even in America, the impression, Curtis Mayfield, all those people, they break up. And you don't wonder why they break up. But you know, when you are poor and you 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 when you, when you want to meet, reach success in life, when you are down, you know, you would make get some flour and make some dumpling. And you would put it in the fire because you cannot cook because you don't have what it takes to cook. Yeah. You know, like uh, um, like chicken or fish or some vegetable. You don't have that. You don't have the yeah. money to do that. Yeah. So you would you just make the flour and put it in the fire with some wood fire and roast it. Yeah. And when it roasts, you scrape it. You know, scrape it. Take off that burn. And then yeah. we would we would sit up, sit together, and you will eat. You yeah. share it because I see that too with Bob Marley and the Whalers, and most poor people do that. Yeah. As a as a friend or family together, and you sit down and you drink some water, and you praise God yeah. because you don't have what it takes to to cook or do, put on a good food pot of food and eat. So, but when when the time comes around that money start to you're earning good money now people one another get greedy yeah wow they, we get envious wow and you know they do, you don't want to share no more yeah you know you yeah. just want you you like take away everything for yourself yeah you know, and you go away and you say, okay, you're not singing with the group no more and you, you disappear, you go to another country. We are going to cry now. We're going to sit and cry and remember back on those days, those good old days, Yeah. which is the past time of the good old days. Yeah. And you, you shed tears. 
because it hurt so much. Yeah. You know, that, that to, togetherness is not there anymore. You know, that bad mind come in and, you know, envious and greed. And you want to bite off more than what you can chew. Right. Man. Well, I know I brought up, I know I opened up a can of worms by asking that, but you know, it's, it was, it was just, you know, when I listened to the music and, and curious about it, about how a group like that, you know, could have put I out so many. It's hard when like I this. remember those times, you know, and remember back, you know, oh, people, human being. Yeah. We are all, a lot of people, uh, of us, you know? Yeah. Just stay that way. Um, you know, it, it, it's very good. Like I said, it's very good when you can bring out the best in a person. Respect. Can I ask Winston, another thing that I read doing research for today to try to interview you as best as I could, I saw this and I read it in a number of different sources, but there really weren't many details at all about it. And so I want to confirm this and also ask you if it's true to tell the story about it, which is everywhere I looked or a couple places I looked, it said that Jimmy Cliff taught you to play the guitar. This is often brought up early in a biography about you, but it doesn't know details about it. Is, did Jimmy Cliff teach you to play the guitar? And if he did, can you tell the story about it? It's not like that. Okay. What really happened, you know, I, I was going, there was a, a, a barber shop, a, a man down in on Spanish Town Road. You know, he passed away many years now, so to speak. Yeah. Father bless him soul. Wow. We, we call him Baba because he was a barber trimming. Yeah. Jimmy Cliff used to go and trim there. Also myself at that time. Same barber. Yes. And okay. he was a good friend of mine. Very good friend. He was into the music business too. And he used to sing. The barber did? Yes. And when you go in the shop, you see a Wolipa 45 small record tie and a, and a string just hang up all over inside here. Wow, so he loved music. Yeah. Yes, he loved yeah. music. He yeah. used to sing. Yeah. You know? And and that's where I used to go and we sit down and we talk about music and all them stuff. You know? And Jimmy Cliff used to come in there and just sit down and, and him just playing him guitar and all that, you know? Wow. And I was there, and when I the first time I hear a man play a guitar in all my life. And I admire him, you know? So I said to myself, oh my God, it going, I feel everything going through my bone, you know? And I say, oh my God, I wish I could play the guitar, you know? Yeah. I, and that's how uh, that that inspiration come to me from to, watching him to watch him. Yeah, and you know, wow. When it was monks Alton Ellis, he have his guitar, and I, I, I asked him to show me some cards. You know, and him show me like a G, yeah, A minor, and yeah. B flat, C sharp, D minor. You know them type of things. I'm not a musician, but I know vaguely, I know a little what you're saying. I'm not a musician, but I know what you're saying. That's right. Yeah. And that's how, uh, I'll give you that answer to the question that you're asking. You did. No, you did. You know, Another, so yeah. it's not really Jimmy Cliff was really teach me. It was the inspiration. I admire him. I admire him for that. The inspiration. You know, and I, and, uh, and uh, I respect him. Yeah. yeah. As an art, early artist, because I used to go and watch him perform too yeah. with, with his Catalyte band. Yeah. Another, th another thing in the same places, Winston, that they uh, people have written, and I want to see if it's true or not. Um, I didn't have time. I, it says that... <laughs> This, the, another thing that I read is that you appeared, you had a role 
in the movie The Harder They Come that starred Jimmy Cliff. Right, and I wondered, right. you, were you in the movie? Yes, yes, yes. Wow, I didn't have time. I've but seen the movie. But most people don't know. Yeah. Because I, I didn't take no major part in it. They, did, they didn't give me no major part. They, it was a, his least Crash Perry when yeah. I was singing for him, when I was doing the movie. Yeah. In Jamaica at that time. And they give him a big part in it to to hack. But he turned it down. And he told me that man, you going to make me go. Wow. And take that part. Yeah. But when I go to Dynamic Sound that time, they didn't give it to me. They give it to Jimmy Riley. Wow. To stand at the door that when Jimmy Cliff come, only him could pass through as somebody very important who gonna be take a part in the in the movie. Yeah. They give it to Jimmy Riley to do to take that part, to stand at the door as a doorman. Oh wow. Me now, they push me and mix me around some crowd right at the, the glass. Toots go and his group on the inside they're singing. And then now me gonna look right through the, the glass to watch, like me looking at Toots. You know? Oh, yeah. And now I and I was among some other some crowd, some other people too. So is on if to spot me, is on going to see my hat and the clothes that I was in to identify me. Yeah. Stop I'm going to be watching Winston later after the interview. Yeah. I'm going to be watching the, the movie. So, so, I've seen so it. That is the part that they give me to play in, yeah. the, in, the, in the movie. You know, wow. so uh, people wouldn't really recognize it. Say, oh, so Winston Jarrett, no, you don't have to know me. I'm going to be watching the movie <laughs> later to try to see you, Winston. <laughs> I'm going to try to spot you out. But yeah. I'm glad that, that I, I know, wanted to make sure I, I, I was asked pissed you off. I was really pissed off. I'm telling you the truth. Because, you know, I didn't want to have a direct spot that, you know, even the For door, sure. man, you know. Wow. But they um, did, it didn't happen like that. Winston, um, I want to talk about the for a minute about, um, and I think I, I sent you a link um, before the interview, but I want to talk about the hit song "True Born African" uh, for a bit. Um, is it correct that "True Born African" is a song that you first wrote when you were singing with Alton Ellis? No, no. Oh, not like that. Okay. How I get to get that song, there was an engineer called Sidi Butner. Sidi Butner. Okay. He, he was to call uh, Cox's uncle. Okay. And he was an uh, engineer at Studio One oh. first. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. And he leave, and he go to RG, and then he leave RG, and he go to Channel One, he leave Channel One and he end up in at Dynamic Sounds. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well, he went to a lot of studios. Yeah. But when he was at Studio One, he, he told me that uh, he wanted to do some songs. But he cannot do it there because Cox not going to allow him to do that. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But when he started to work at Dynamic Sound now, he called me again and Say what he would like me to uh, come and do two songs, right? And he's gonna want the Slickers, the group named the Slickers. Yeah. They come and they do two songs also. Wow. At the, the same day. Yeah. And then now uh, I wrote that song. And do it for African. It. Yes, true born African. Yeah. And I. It's just recently, it just recently now that I'm living here in America, I find that the city boat that did leave dynamic and go to England and leave all his rest of his life, he passed away there. And he, he looked like he gave Altanelli uh, the same song. Oh. 
And yesterday I was right on this, you sent it on this. I was on my phone, I was listening to it. Yeah. Two born African Italians was singing it too. Yeah. That's yeah. why I yeah. And I never know that. Yeah. You Me, know? And so I listened to that. I wanted to ask about that. And you know, and then I sent you uh that link to which I hope that uh people will will who read or listen to this interview, I hope that they will go and look up on YouTube. But there is a 45 of Chewborn African, it's on the RCA label that you arranged and produced with Aston Family Man Barrett, who everyone knows, or most people know, um, is Bob Marley's legendary bass, bass player. And I was so excited when I saw that, uh, Winston, that I, I sent that link uh, with that song to Aston Barrett Jr., to Family Man's son, because- no. wow. Yeah, because I have interviewed him before, I know him, and I said, when I talk to Winston, I have to ask him about how he got together with your dad in 1973, and they produced and they put out this version of True Born African. Wow! And he, he was. I'm he was tell you the story. I'm gonna tell you the story now. Please listen this carefully. Please. There was a a good friend of mine named Brent Clark. I don't know. I never hear nobody call his name. He's on the 45. His name is on that 45. Yeah, Brent yeah. Clark is yeah. a good friend of mine. Wow. He was road manager for Bob Marley. Oh, wow. In the early days. And he had a brother too named Sebastian Clark. OK. He live in England. Wow. He, 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 yes. But Brent Clark come to Jamaica. And when he come to Jamaica, I was along with him, all, 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 in every day, every day. Wow. Sit down and we smoke herb and we eat together. Yeah. And he said to me, say, want to do some songs. I said, I said, well, I would be happy for that because at that time I'm not making no money at all, nothing. At, uh, you know, in, in the music business, uh, you have to suffer. Yeah. It's not sometimes it's not even all about money it's because you're not going to get it. Right. But I I don't care not, nothing about that. I just want to do some music. Respect. All of my life I go through hard times. But Respect. because I love music, Respect. you know, yeah, it, it's, it, it's coming straight from the heart. And, you know, it, when you want to have some lyrics, you want to put your, your lyrics of your sufferation yeah. and write about it and put it into music. Yeah. So that's how uh, uh, Family Man, Aston yeah. Barrett, his brother, the drummer. Yeah. Was that the Hippie Boys. Yeah, yeah. Old band, the Hippie yeah. Boys. Yeah. They used to back me in the early days. Wow. Most of my record is you look and that's how, before Bob Marley get famous. Yeah. No people I'm going to talk about Bob Marley because he's rich now. He's very and he's famous. Right. At that time, it wasn't like that. Right. No people don't want to hear Bob Marley. So it, them say too revolutionary. Right. Because they were dealing with R and B, soul music, and American music, and yeah. all them stuff. You know. Yeah. But. At that time, I love Bob Marley. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him like how you love Jesus. Wow. And I used to work and sell him music. People don't want, one and two people buy it. Them say it's too revolutionary. Yeah? Yeah. Them just want, you have some people don't want to hear about truths and rights. You know? That's for sure. That's when true. When it comes to truths and rights. People don't want to hear about truths no, and rights. No, no, no. They don't. They want to hear about some. And not for and not some, for the poor. Right. They just want to hear about some negative things when I'm not, not, not going away. True. You know, True. some hype up things and some devil things and all them stuff. True. You know. True. But me, I love those type of music. I love them. That's why I sing about sing it too. 
Well, we so, love you for it. Yes, and when I do that song, True Born African, I sing it over for, uh, for Brent Clark, up by Randy's studio. Yeah. And uh, the Slickers, you yeah. know, Johnny Too Bad, that song. Yeah. Them do it on the same session. Wow. A dynamic wow. sound. Wow. The city boat now. But I yeah. lick over the two born African up by Randy's for Brent Clark with wow. Family Man and the Whalers. Now, did and you... he told me that he's going to put it out, that album. He said he want to make a career, step up my career because he loved me. Yeah. And he told me that he's going to put it out, try release. He have a friend in RCA Victor. Yeah. And that and RCA Victor going to put out the album. But he passed away after that, oh, wow. you know, and I was very, um, uh, very sad and uh, to to know that he he did pass away. And it's years after that I realized that the man passed away, you know. So, can I want to I want to ask a little bit more uh, about the lyrics of True Born African, um, Winston? There, I have a very particular, specific question I need to ask about the lyrics, but. Before I do, um, I wanted to ask, incidentally, did you know, I just happened to find out when I was looking a little bit into the song, that, um, that the late Daddy Uroy released an album in 1991 that is, goes by the same name, True Born African, that was produced by Mad Professor. Did you know that, that, that he had an album, a whole album? And a song even that's called True Born African. The song, I listened to it, is completely different than your song. But, you know, the concept is obviously, you know, must have been taken from you. So I was just curious if you knew about that album. I, I, at the first, I am hearing it from the ass's mouth. I, wow. It, you know, I never know about that. Yeah. But, but what I would say, in Jamaica, when you speak about Africa, is a universal thing. The ghetto side of people know that the fact that we all come from Africa. Yeah. And through Mo, Mo, um, Messiah Gavi. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and for me, just yeah. for me, a uh, man like Martin Luther King. Yeah. People respect those people. Yeah. And there was a man in Jamaica named Martin Moplano. Yeah. I have a, I'm going to ask you about him. I grew up amongst him. He's in make me a van, my, my, he's a rasta man. He's in make me a van, me, me, me not a dread. Right. From 1972. I used to go amongst him daily. I even when he was sick. And that scotch, scotch yard down in, in the country park there. I used to go down there and visit him. And he was teaching at the university in Kingston. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. He, he, he do that as a, a hobby. Every day, he teach about His Majesty, and, and he teach and speak about Africa. He teach Bob Marley about that. Yeah. He said to Bob Marley, he cannot do it by himself. He need help to spread the, the gospel and spread the word about Ethiopia. His Majesty come to Jamaica in 1966, and he was the first man to ever go to Africa and meet His Majesty back, in, back then in those days you know, in the earlier days. So Africa is a is a part of us all, you know? Right. right. The, the, the repatriation, there is so much things about Africa. So you're not, you know, you're not, the, yeah. the, 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 the good part of life and where we're from and where we belong and who we are, you know? Yeah. So, to speak about Africa is a blessing. 
Respect. So that song what you talk about uh you right yeah. professor in England. Yeah. Uh that that to me, just to me, not you or uh, nobody, to me that is just a normal thing. You know? That is just a normal thing. But my song, that true born African. Yeah. Them say, you're not to look back. Because you'll turn a pillar of salt. I, I but uh, where Africa is, is concerned, for yeah. me, and for many people, thousands, millions of people, speaking about Africa is your history. So... So can it's I ask, our history. So, so can I ask, because I agree with you 100%, uh, Winston, but about the, uh, the lyrical question, I, I told you there was a lyrical question that's burning inside me, I have to ask you. Um, because, and I don't know if I sent you this, but it sounds like you listened to it, that Alton Ellis, there's a, if, you, if you Google up, you can Google up Alton in the Flames, and there's a true born African version sung by Alton Ellis and the Flames, right? And then you can Google up your version, like the one that produced by Family Man. And one thing that was very curious to me when I listened to it closely was the very beginning of the song. And in the one, the version that is by Alton and the Flames, it begins, um, tell, so it's, it, the, the Alton and Ellis one begins, tell St. Peter, um, at Africa's gate, I'm coming home, though I may be late. That is but, coming from my song. That, right. part, that part is coming from the same song that I sing and wrote. And your song begins, Tell Selassie. Well, I do too. Well, well it's the same thing. I, I call Selassie in the second cut that I did for Brain Clark. So it, it changes from St. Peter to Selassie. Well, when I say, say when tell St. Peter's is, uh, is, uh, is his majesty I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, but yeah. I would say St. Peter's in yeah. Africa, the place. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it is his majesty I'm talking about, same way. But I do it in a, the, the lyrics change the lyrics just a little just a shade little different yeah if, if you have knowledge of what africa is all about that's what i'm talking about yeah that's what i'm singing about yeah you know yeah so i can at least know he have a i don't know not because he died because you can because we are gonna die one day only yeah. true because some gone before, but we are after we're gonna go one day. True. When God ready for us. True. That so I wouldn't really um carry no feelings. Yeah. In a me in a me heart or in a me, me soul. Because if you must leave all judgment unto God. To Respect. the Father himself. That but I'm just saying, words speaking. At that time, that man didn't really have no, he didn't have no, I would just cut it short, say he didn't have no love in him heart, for me, personally. He have a, a grudge, you know, okay. because. Alton did. Yes. Yeah. People have grudge in them heart. Yeah. Because, you know, they don't want to reach, be successful. Yeah. It's all about him. Yeah. It's all about him. He, Your song. Concern. Yeah. He didn't have that that love for me. Because you see, I judge people not by or even how I judge you by your talk and I judge you the action, your action. Respect. And his action with me is concerned wasn't uplifting to me. I can understand. He, yeah. We yeah. are coming from that barrel. We come like a barrel of crab into a barrel. And when one come out, they don't want to see no, no other crab come out. They want to push it down and broke off your hand and your foot. Wow. So you can't, you know, you don't come out. 
as, you know? as, as brutal. Can I ask Winston, um, going back to the, as you said, that true born African and talking about Africa, you know, is such a profound song. And to me, it's profound in the way that like Junior Biles' song, A Place Called Africa is so profound, the way that you're singing about Africa. And later in the, in the true born African in, in your song, you, you sing, you know, tell Selassie I, you're saying, tell him that I'm doing well in spite of living in hell. And when I hear that lyric, I'm imagining, um, when, I, when I listen to the song and I'm listening to that lyric, I'm imagining like, you know, the hell of Babylon or, right. or, right. or, maybe, right. or maybe like a, a, a colonial plantation almost. Right, right. And That's how we are living in the ghetto in Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, yeah. You know, like I said, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. You know, if you know what that meant. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But, uh, but the suffering, man, is like a load carrying, and the, you know, Jesus carrying that cross. Yeah. You know, and he said the same thing that he go through. You have to go through it too. Yeah. You know, we all have to. And you know. But um, I was dying. You're born poor, man, but it, that don't mean to say if you're dead poor. Yeah. And I'm hoping and I'm praying for one day to come that I can put down that heavy load Respect. of suffering. Yeah. It's not a good thing. To no you. man. No man, um, you understand? I do, Winston. It makes sense to talk also so much about true born African because when I go through and I listen to all look at your albums and all your body of work over all these years, um, it's clear that you know your Rastafarian, your beliefs, and your lifestyle, your Rasta beliefs and lifestyle, they dominate so much of your musical catalog. And I'm thinking of songs like Fear Not the Almighty Dread and Solid Foundation, you know, too many songs really to mention, but it makes sense that, uh, that they named the documentary that I hope that people will watch about you. There's the documentary about your life that a man by the name of uh, Nick Nackis, uh, I think he's a friend of yours from Seattle who you met, he made, he was so moved by your stories that, um, are you still there? Yeah, oh, man. Uh, that he, he made this documentary that was narrated by uh, uh, Roger Steffens, another reggae historian about your life. And that, that film is called um, True Born African. And I wanted to ask you um, a question about an interview that the filmmaker that guy, Mr. Nakis, gave, he gave an interview and he had a quote and I wanted to ask you a little bit about it because it goes to or some of the things we're talking about. He said, um, quote, there had been a drought in Jamaica um, for months and shortly after the plane which carried Haile Selassie touched down, it rained. All these people were treating this like it was an event of great religious significance, like something out of the Bible. That turned a lot of these guys into Rastafarians. It was Winston's own moment of conversion. That's, that's what he said to the, to the interviewer. Right, and I right. wanted to just ask about it and say, is his description, what he's saying about how it is that you became a, a Rasta, is that accurate? That it was when, he's saying that when Selassie's plane touched down in Jamaica, that it began to rain, and that because of that event, many people were then suddenly convinced that, you know, Selassie is the living God, and that that was also your moment of conversion too. Is that accurate? I would say, it's really accurate. It's really after, uh, accurate after the fact. Yeah. Because uh, 
there was so many things happening. That's why them say is oh, it's a long story. There is so much things happening. Yeah. In Jamaica and in the world. Even right now, you see how the world is running. Yeah. It makes you sad. People True. like messed up. Children True. crying. Father, mother, father dying. Children yeah. dying. It's sad. It passed sadness. Some is more than us to, to bear. Because God did speak that already from the Bible. I'm a Bible man, you know, like Bob Marley. I believe in, in God so much that I love him. I put him first in my life. And I know a lot of people like me does, do too. You know? Yeah. But at that time, man, people didn't know who, who his majesty was. When I say was, look like. So when them saw him, yeah, it's become like it's a miracle yeah. happening. Yeah, but you know when Jesus was on earth, miracle a lot of miracle was happening at that time, and it's still happening now today. Were you? Because were you, uh, I was with Martin Maplano. You were at the were you at the airport when I was in at the airport. That's what I'm telling you the story, wow. and that's what Nicholas was writing about. What I told him. Yeah. Wow. You know the history yeah, cannot wow. erase, and it cannot wipe out clean. Wow. You know, so who some people feel they can turn back the hands of time. It's sad for them. It is so, it, it, it's sad for sadness. Yeah. Because history stand per dominate. It come like a, a, it stand like a stone that cannot be moved. Immortal and immortal. Many people cry when they see His Majesty 1966 at the airport. I was small. And the Martin Maplana wing, like I told you before. Yeah. He, I go, he, he said, little, my little son. Yeah. If you want to be with me, you have to do and learn the right thing. Wow. Listen what I'm saying to you, my little son. Put on your naughty dread. We are your, your, your naughty dread. You know? There, did, did I was small because you see I was like Zacchaeus. If you read the Bible about Zacchaeus, he was a very short little man. I do that song. Come down. Come down, Zacchaeus. Yeah. Yes, all those things coming from the Bible. Yeah. Did did that's did, how I write that song too from the Bible. Winston, did, 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 you know, there are different mansions, uh, at least I know just from reading about this stuff, not personally, but just from reading about it, that there are different mansions of Rastafari. There are, there's the Nyabingi, there's the Bobo, there is the tr 12 tribes. Um, did you, did you, when you were becoming a Rasta and you being influenced in that direction and you were with Mortim Mortimer Planner, and learning these things, was there a particular mansion of Rastafari that you were studying or being a part of between those? Well, like I say, I go amongst the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know. Yeah. And even right now, you have different, uh, s s different uh, version of the Bible. True. You know, people water tight down. People, yeah. uh, people release Bible that is uh, according to uh, if me uh, speak English, they put it into different languages. True. 
so people can learn and re read and learn. True. They don't put it in English alone. True. You know? True. Well, it's the same way with the Rastafari. You have Seminaya, you have uh, Reminaya, you have Bobo Dread, and you have uh, Ethiopians. Yeah. Lots of people. Wow, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You get the message? Yeah. Well, and you have some people call you Rent a Dread. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Rent a Dread, huh? Yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, yeah, Bobo Dread. And Bobo Dread. Yeah. What's the rent a dread? I have to ask. What's the rent a dread? You don't know what rent a dread is? I don't know what the rent a dread. No. What do you man? <laughs> when you go to Mantico Bay in Jamaica and yeah. white people come and them say they're not coming into Kingston. Them going to Mantico Bay. Right? And them go all different part down there in Mantico Bay. Yeah. And the first, the first, first thing them start to walk up and down in the area, tell them go to Negril. Right. When them go to Negril, them see some little man look like me. But them love white people because them know they're going to get them food. Right. White people are going to give money. You're gonna, you see them, them selling all kind of stuff. 100%. Right. Yes. And tourists buy them. Right. To support them so they can right. eat food. And them, them, them love the white people. So they say to the white woman, but you look fat, you know. I had a married to you. And if you want to take me for your boyfriend and carry me to America, I carry me to Germany, I carry me to England. Right. Enough people do that. Wow. Because them look good to her. Yeah. You know, them love yeah. black man because that coming from slavery. Yeah. The feet white and pretty. Yeah. 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 You, you, look, you look good. To do what she wants you to do. Right. You know? And she carry you away. You know? Yeah. But when she carry you away and carry you to this land, them, them start to angle her bad. Hmm. To make she look shame. Wow. By doing a lot of things what she never expect them was to do. Right. Hard to do. Right. Yeah? yeah. Until them, them shit them back at Jamaica. Because their attitude is so, so bad that she cannot believe so they would really do a thing like that. Wow. So then call them rent a dread. Wow. Wow. They're going to rent them on go for a moment. And then next the next moment, they have to ship them home back to where they belong. Wow, Winston, you just blew my mind. I had no idea. I I didn't know that. Wow. You learn now. You get the message. Yeah, man. Yeah, I did. And hey, Winston, um, I want to ask, um, you know, because we're talking about before I leave the subject, um, of 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 Rasta in in Jamaica, do you do you think that the Jamaican government has done enough? to respect and protect the rights and the cultural heritage of Rastas. And if you don't think that they have done enough, what do you think they should do? I would have to go hold a meeting to do that. To Say again? To, I would have to hold a meeting. A <laughs> home hold a meeting? Yes. Too many things. Uh, there is so much. It's a big question that you're asking. I uh, I know. Because you see, it that question mixed up, up amongst politics. True. Ah, uh, in Jamaica, the Rastaman call it folly tricks. Folly tricks. Folly tricks, because. 
politics can mix up with easy man's kissing. Right. What make the world not right. True. Because there's so much evil. True. Corruption. True. Government. Yeah. The heads are for the people. The, 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 the prime minister. Yeah. He's not the government. The people are the government. Nice. Respect. The people yeah. appointed him and the election run and him win the majority. Yeah. Not the minority. Like Omi Yudemata. Yeah. Rule. The majority rule and speak for the people. The people employ and uh, other prime minister put him in the house of parliament to run the country for right. the people. True. By the people. For the people. True. By the people. True. Yeah? Yeah. Welcome to the rest of man. Yeah. Is not them saying that organiz organization is not like that. It's a cult of what we believe in. The Imperial Majesty Selassie I is the first King of Kings and Lords of Lords. Remember, the King. You have no S. Kings mean more than one. Get it? Yeah. King, K-I-N-G, stand for one. Singular. K-I-N-G-S, stand for more than one. Singular versus plural. Right. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. And these people don't get it. Wow. Kings with the S. Yeah. Gods of the earth. Respect. Respect. That's why we is we Rastaman worship one God. Only one, no more. When Jesus was on earth walking in Jerusalem, his majesty was there with him. Amongst priests, a lots of priests and prophets mm. and wow. scientists. Wow. Going to school. Wow. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. That's why I'm saying a new name shall be written and called, and his name shall be. Is imperial mean kings of kings and lords of yeah. lords, the conquering ruler. Jesus, where me, where my brain tell me, me don't ask nobody this. But my teaching, what me get, tell me that. Co only coming from my mouth, not nobody else. I don't know if nobody go and say the same thing like what me say. Yeah. But Jesus transformed himself unto his majesty. That's why we don't leave out Jesus out of nothing. At the same spirit. Wow. That's so interesting. That's, that's so interesting to think about, Winston. That's so interesting yeah. to think about. We don't leave out him. Because if you leave him out, you're going to have a big problem. Um, Winston, um, because also you mentioned how Mortimer, Mortimer Planner and Bob Marley were, were friends and also how Mortimer, uh, was a spiritual influence and teacher to Bob. I wanted to ask you, you know, I know you were older than Bob Marley was, but did, were you and Bob, were you friends? Did you also have a friendship with Bob Marley when you were Growing up in Trenchtown? I told you already and I will tell you again. 
we were living in the same community. Me and Bob Marley go to the same studio, studio one with Cox and Clement Dad. And were you friends? We, of course. Yeah, okay. But I just tell you, if we go up in the same community, we must be bedrooms. Yeah? Him yeah. sing and me sing, same way. Although me was singing before him. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And but there is another prophet going to come, which is Bob Marley. He you know? Yeah. And I, we were around the same teacher like Martin, Martin Maplano. Bob Marley was around him too as a, as a student, yeah. so to speak. And Martin Maplano write the song, give him name. Yes, Selassie is the chapel. Selassie is the chapel. Yes. Did, did, did you and Bob ever get, have a chance to collaborate or sing together on any songs? No, no, no. no. But I I put out a true name, Slaving in Babylon. If, if you go to research, you can find that online. Yeah. Right? And that song, in the yeah. one give him to put on him label. Wow. And I, I said, no. I don't want no nothing to come in between. You still do your thing and make me do my thing. Wow. Me all, me all right by doing what me doing, and him all right by doing what him doing. But a man said to me, say, no, he don't think that is right. I should give it to him. We put upon him label. But I know, I say, not because at that time things wasn't going right. You know? Yeah. The Things name of the the, the name of the song the name of the song was Slaving in Babylon, you said? Slaving in Babylon, written by me. Wow. Me produced it too. Wow. So I put it out on my label, I design a label and put it out by wow. myself. Wow. Wow. And um, I distribute it by myself. You know, I always ask people, Winston, who are who who have personal experiences with Bob Marley. I've I've always asked because you know Bob Marley is a reason, one of the reasons why I got into reggae music to begin with. Because when I was younger, I had a a man in my life who was from Haiti, and he played a lot of Bob Marley records. And when I was growing up, so I always had a big love for Bob Marley. And so whenever I I interview somebody who actually knew him and was friends with him. I always ask the question, what's a, what is a fond memory or a good memory, a personal memory that you have of being with Bob, you know, something that you, that you remember that you think about, you know, of your friendship about him with him. You see me, me born September. Yeah. 1940, the 14th of September. Me, me don't believe in to, to beg people. I will die first. You hear me? Yeah. I would die. Before you beg. Before me beg. Yeah. Because I feel if I beg, I'm not going to get nothing by digging. Yeah. And I like to have you see if me have a one dollar in my pocket. My one dollar me stretch it as far as it can go. Yeah. And it can, anyway it caught it pop off. Can't go no further. God dollar is just a dollar. True. And when it finish. Me stand my my me stand by my own ground. And I go and steal. And I go and disrespect people. Yeah, but if you give me honestly, so we stand right, take this, yeah. it's a different thing. I will take it. Right. Yeah. And I respect you for that. Yeah. And if I can work it out or do something, I will do it. Right. Bob Marley is a man, no, me no beg him. Yeah. But me love him. 
Yeah. I love him so much that I don't want to beg him nothing because one time I do that one time already. And him tell him, him run me. Him tell me, say, him never expect that from me because I sing with Alton Ellis. And I sing her too. So I'm not see why him should have given me no money. Wow. I mean, they need it so bad at the time because there was a big thing in the country, I go on to Jamaica, where pe business people are capitalists, are run out of the country. And not never go on to poor people. Man, I run left all the house, left, come out of the house, left it and people just go there and capture the house, the man all day, and live in it. You understand? And at the time, there's a crowd up a tough gang. Long family as a tough Spanish town road. But people in a in a desperate yeah. position. They yeah. go, they go beg him. And him help who can help. I don't I don't think him help everybody, but he help the majority. And through that now people take set panic. You understood? So me love him. Me love him so much that me stand my ground. But speaking with the music, yeah, I learn a lot from him. Yeah, because him lyrics speak yeah. enough. Yeah, to the world. Where I think every man should have respect that. True. You understand? Yeah. But Peter Touch and Bonnie Wheelers and Bob Marley, we used to work in the same yard where we live in. The same yard as a god is, wow. is, is what me talking a god on in a history. So we work, we, we, we perform and do recording. Just a recording we do at the same studio, Coxon Studio, at 13 Benford Road, Kingston. Yeah. yeah. We go to the same studio. So, what more would you want me now? You see, how close are they? How close we grow up? Yeah. Musically, because I say, you, people call Bob Marley name now because I'm rich and them can't hustle off of him. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You know? Yeah. And it's all about you, what a man can give or Win what you can earn off a man. Win Winston, you, you did a tribute album in 1994. In 1994, you released an album. I tried to find it, but actually it's very hard to find online. I tried various streaming services to try to see if I could pull it up. I was only able to pull up a few different tunes from the album that you released, but it was a very, very cool album, this tribute album. I could see the album cover. There's a picture of you on the cover. You have like a wide brim hat on the cover that was released in 1994. And I wanted to ask you about the album for a couple of reasons. And why I was trying to pull it up is because I saw that there were a couple of legendary musicians who performed on this album that you released, this tribute album to Bob Marley. Because I saw that there was drummer Santa Davis, that uh, Flava Hulk, the bassist, um, and uh, Chinna Smith, guitarist, all those legends um, participated in this tribute album. And then I read when I was doing the research about the album, trying to find it. And I wanted to ask you about this because I, I couldn't, I wasn't sure. It said that um, on the tribute album that there was Peter Tosh and Bunny Whaler and that they were featured on the album. Now I know that Peter Tosh, he had, you know, he was, he was, he had been dead by then because 1994 when you released the album but maybe you had some lyrics you know that you used i just wanted to ask you 
is is Bunny Whaler on that album, on that tribute album um, that you released uh, to Bob in 94? No, Bunny Whaler wasn't really on it, but what I really did, that had what you're talking to me about was a field marshal. Oh. Field marshal hat. Okay. Coming from his majesty used to wear it. Oh yeah, they had the hat, yeah. Yes, a field marshal. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Anyway, I mean I wish I could have found that album because it, it that I don't, it think, I don't think you would find it. You know why? Why? I never get around to release it in Jamaica. I get I was in England coming off a tour the, in Europe at the time, and I stopped in England for only three days. And I didn't really want to release it, but I never get around to do that. So I give it to one of my friends. Yeah. He passed away in a way. And I asked him to uh, to release it in England, and he did. Yeah, yeah. And now I get a, I think I get a couple copy of it, and I have one right here now. You do? Wow. Yes. That's probably worth a lot of money, Winston. Yes. Yeah, that's probably that album is probably worth a lot of money. Yes. Um, because I tell you, how oh, I really love Bob Marley. Yeah. You know? I love him because of his works. And then now, him and Marty Moplana, Bonnie Wheelers, and, and Peter Tosh was at the airport when His Majesty come to Jamaica in 1966. Yeah. When the plane touched, we were out there, millions of people from all over Jamaica. Or some Rasta man who you never see in all of your life. Those Rasta man, you wouldn't see them because they're living at the mountain in the country part. But when His Majesty come to Jamaica, every, every man from the know walks of life we were at the airport to meet him and greet him. And when His Majesty come, I see, we see the plane. They're all waiting. The whole place was black. Every sidewalk, cribbies and corner was packed. I was a little boy. Some people up in a tree. Some climb the post. Some depend on some building top. So I, I was a little boy, so nobody see me. But was into a truck where we're going to a truck, a big truck. Come to the airport with a lot of Rasta man, but me was a little boy there. So the, them big and them tall and all them stuff, so nobody wouldn't see me. Me come like Zacchaeus. Wow. Me have to go up in a tree. To see. Like when Jesus had passed that, you know, he could see me up in the tree. Yeah. So, when the, when the plane touched down, ah, the sun was hot, 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 the day I, do, I can't forget. But I just see like he's about 150 white doves. I wow. don't know where they're coming from. If it's out of the plane, Wow. Uh, where them coming from, but them just start to fly. Beautiful. And then the plane touched down. And when the plane touched down and them say, this is my, you know, uh, Martin Maplano was the first man go up there to represent all the races, them from Jamaica as the head of the Ethiopians, Rastafari. Movements, yeah, and him, and the, them open the plane, and then all the governments and prime ministers and heads of governments come and represent him 
and carry him up by the governor house of king's house yeah and then his majesty wept he wept when he see all the rashes because to me i think he was thinking about education yeah the people of jamaica educated it but when him find out that the uh, the majority of the people didn't really he come i think he come to help all those people to develop to develop to develop yeah a better lifestyle yeah you know with, with the people you know yeah because uh he was shocked Rastaman, by the Rastaman was in africa too yeah he's yeah. not jamaica alone yeah but when him see them him wept because they the poverty it was poverty yeah and it's poverty while him wept and he give them he, he he come to give them some money to to help them and thing build school and all them thing but he, i think he give the money to the the government of jamaica to help yeah. them yeah. and build that school you yeah. know so yeah. he wept and that's why he wept so hmm. well in other in other documentary yeah uh, uh, uh you, you find that is is him talk about the history of of what did really take place and his majesty wept 100 so asked why he wept so i feel it's the poverty why he wept when him see them you know yeah hey winston um already we've been talking for a very long time i i want to thank you for being so generous with your time and i only have a few a few final questions for today because only because i know we can't talk all night long i, I kind of want to um but i'm hoping that you'll be willing maybe in the future we can do this again because there's so many other songs and and parts of history that i would like to ask you about so you know so and there are some things that i won't be able to ask you about today i'm hoping maybe in the future you might be willing to to talk to me a little bit more so we could get a little bit more of it. Would you do that in the in the future? Uh, I would say yes, because you see, when it comes to truths and rights, I have to enlighten and let the people and let the world know. Thank you. The history Thank of, you. The, of the, the music industry itself and what you really go through with the producers them. Yeah, who are reducers. The, and the reducer i call it because yeah. them them reduce down the music from what it was and right. put it in a different concept what not really right for the world of of of, of your technology coming and change up everything when those back then was manual everything was going manual yeah that's why the recording was so good well for me and for me for me back then i mean i'll always like that music that you made and bob marley made and bunny made and all the and all those real foundational uh reggae singers back in the 70s in the early days of reggae for me that's the that was the top of the music um, and one of, for example, and I want to just bring up one other album of yours, just in these last few minutes that we have. And this is another one of those albums that I feel it fits in with those times. And it's, it's a kind of album where you listen and you can hear the live musicians. And it's such a good album. You're the man of the ghetto. That album, man of the ghetto is just an incredible album that you put out. I think it was around 19. 78 or 79 and it features musicians like sly and robbie and ansel collins and gladstone anderson and when we next connect winston when we next sit to have a have a talk i'd like to ask you many more questions about the the songs on that album but for today concerning the album name and the title track man of the ghetto would you agree that a big part of your musical legacy, a big part of your whole 60 year plus musical career has been kind of being a spokesman, a spokesman, a spokesman 
for the ghetto, for the poor, and for the people who are struggling with, with, with suffering and poverty. Hasn't that been a huge part of your music? Man, you have so much good, very good question. That mean, have to think, have to think, you know, because you're one of those type of people where our uh, guys were really uh, ask good question that uplift me, you know? Thank you. Respect. Come, Mr. Man, that's why they call me man of the ghetto. Yeah. God, really, I am a man of the ghetto. Yeah. Some people feel, say, well, then music business or my music career was people will come from Beverly Hills, they're rich. Wow. And I want to let them know it's nothing like that. That's why you see the poverty and the poorness and the suffering that we go through. Yeah. I put it in the music. Wow. That's why they call me Man of the Ghetto. Yeah. And that right. album produced by me. Yeah. You see, the good thing about it. Yeah. You know, and I didn't just want to do some good works so my work shall be glorified, which is the Father in heaven. You know? And when you do something good, it stand out. Yeah. And yeah. it come like a stone that it cannot be moved. Wow. You know? It's like as solid as the rock of Gibraltar. That respect is true and that album that album and plenty enough many of your albums winston where they will live on like like the like like you say like the the rock of gibraltar and i know i know you're constantly making you know music for example you know i know just doing some research that in 2019 you released a 12 track album called words of wisdom and you know even very recently as I mentioned earlier, you've been performing in my neck of the woods um, in California, even though I was very heartbroken, as you know, I was very sad not to be able to uh, see you. I thought I was going to be able to come see you live. And I'm still hoping, um, you know, my friend scientist, the great legendary scientist has told me that um, maybe they might be able to do some shows like you did with the Soul Syndicate recently. Um, in, in California that he's hoping to get some shows in, in closer to San Diego and maybe in Los Angeles. And I'll, I, I can tell you if he does, I'll be in the front row. You'll see me. I'll have, I'll have, I'll have three different cameras, uh, Winston. I, but, just, I, I really love you, man. I tell you the truth. I really do. Thank but you, you see, I want to just big up Jeff Al Grove. Yeah. Right Vibes Production. Yeah, yeah, pick up Jeff. And yeah. I really love it because it's him take up my career and want to put it to another level. Yeah. You know? And he told me that he going to do all those things from a long time ago. I just come to fulfill me. Wow. You know? And it's the Santa Davis and the yeah. Soul Syndicate and Scientist. Yeah. We are all coming from Jamaica. Back in the days, yeah, you know, and if you if you look for me, you know, for my album, I don't leave out those guys, those musicians, and I always like to work with the best yeah. because it's only the best is good enough. Respect, you know, yeah. And I, I, in all of my career, I'm coming from those same musicians from Drew Creed days with. Coxing days with Jackie Matu and the whole of those man, the soul vendors and so much good musician I work with. All by my songs then. You know? And God bless enough of them pass out and gone. Them soul yeah. rest in peace. Yeah. But them name after ever 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 have call in the history. You see the history? Yeah. 
I told you a while ago, it cannot erase. Neither it cannot wipe away. Easily. Respect. You know? Because yeah. glorify unto, unto the Father in Zion, Mount Zion, and glory to, unto the Father, unto all these good people, man. That's why I say good people yeah. is just good people. And it's a good people I think you should honor them. Don't ride upon them back and, and want to use them and take us like a user. You know? Yeah. It's, it's not a good feeling, man. I it's agree. not a good thing. I agree. You know? Exalt the people, them, that is good. Respect. You know? And respect them. Honor them. You know, nobody never give me not, nothing like no, no honor. You know, people wait until when they're dead before them call and give some some good um something where you can put by your wall and when you're dead and gone a man can see nothing nobody they were giving standard. No government. Well, Bob's you know the Green. Bob's the Green and no none of them. Not even in Jamaica. No people will call me name, they might be them they know me. It's and a it's shame. Sad. It's a Winston. It's it's a shame. I can't tell you. Uh, I feel I feel so bad to hear that because. And I I have asked so many different artists about this, including Sly Dunbar. When I interviewed Sly Dunbar, I asked him about how there's so many people, so many artists who, like yourself, have been forgotten by the Jamaican government, the people who are supposed to be honoring the culture and where the music, you know, is come from. And so it makes, it hurts my heart. And I, what I do want to say to you though, as your fan is that, that your music is, I wish I could give you something to put up by your wall, but you should know that your music is burning in the hearts of so many people. That's, that is a big, bigger honor than any, than any honor that, a government could give you is that you have your fans have your have the music your music is beating in our hearts so and that will always be true from generation I to generation know you're talking man because i can't let me tell you about that if i ever sit down to tell you about that what you're saying yeah. it's going to take me 15 years or more <laughs> yeah yeah but well, you know, when i come to america here yeah i find out that the way them exploit me mm. coming from all of my music when I sing, they call me all kind of name. They piss me off. They call me T Man and the T Bone Steak. They call me Adam and Eve. Wow. They call me all kind of them doing put on my credit for my record. Wow. Me right, them say a foreign tune me sing over. Them wow. do me some things with Lee Scott Perry and all Prince Buster don't beat the whole of them. Yeah. I don't get no honor, no respect, exploitation, infringement. Them there is everything what they do me. Yeah. For yeah. my music, I mean I tell you, but you see my voice? Yeah. My voice can't change. A one Winston Jarrett voice. And when them do all them things, that man still say, no, a Winston Jarrett are singing. You know? Respect. You see my wife, Patsy Jarrett, I can't tell her. She has my backbone. She has a sit down. Winston, um, I want to give you the final word before we hang up. Um, but first, before, before I give you the final word, before we hang up, I just want to sincerely thank you. Um, it's such an honor to speak with you. Um, and I hope um, that we'll speak again. Um, maybe I'll see you perform live soon. Um, and I hope that you'll stay safe. Um, I hope that, um, that you'll continue to make, you know, this soulful music, spiritual music that's so important to so many people. And, I'll say just speaking for myself to me, it's so your music is so important. Um, 
And so I just want to thank you, thank you for it um, and for this time. And my final question, Winston, we'll, we'll of course you and I will talk. You know, we'll send us we'll send some messages later, but we'll we'll be in touch. But my final question before we hang up this official interview is, um, what is the final message? The final message that you you'd like to share today um, to all the Winston Jarrett fans, to people all over the world who will read or watch this interview, what would you like to say to them um, about anything, about your career or about your legacy or what you would like to, how, whatever you would like to convey to you, all your fans? I want to, again, I'm going to say this. I'll give thanks to Jeff Algrove, man. Right Vibes Production in California, Mozali. I love him. I love Jeff from my heart. Respect. And my wife love him too. Respect. But what I want to tell the world, I, you know, so before I end, I see one of my songs them put out in England named Zion, I Love You. It's on the least Scratch Perry label. Wow. Them release. And we, somebody released it back in England, and I just see it on, um, on the media a while, like social media. Yeah. Then put the photo there, and I talk about it's one of the greatest songs that they ever do. Wow. You know? I thank God for that still, but I think I call the guy in England on my phone and talk to him, send him a message, because he's, he's one of my brethren named Yoga Man. Call me and talk, same seat I was talking about it, and talk, call a guy in England, and we say, watch a man. I don't know who gives you the rights to do that without contacting me before you, you do that. Yeah. You release my album, I mean, my 45, and you know, you don't expect, so well then, to cover me before and get my, give, let me give you the okay, yeah. And then me tell you how much money me want. I wanna give me that now before becoming a sign a contract with no producer in a Jamaica. Up till now, nowhere. Yeah? So all those rights belong to me. Yeah. And you should contact me before you do that. You understand? Oh. The man tell me, say, no, it's least per crash perry tune and anything. With the publishing, I go back to Lee Scratch Perry. I say, yeah, that's how you do it. He say, yes. And oh. I say, I, I didn't want a liar. Wow. Uh, I, did, I didn't have no lie up till now. Put him on the, and say, deal with him. Deal with him. Up till now, it don't happen. Yeah. And it's not the first. I see them. I, I, Put out me tune them all about na England, all about na Europe. Without my consent, same way. You know? Do you know? And then put out Fear Not. Wow. Pass through the one, same way. So I just want to let the world know that. I'm glad you mentioned it, Winston. And you know, scientists and I are often talking about, and I know you know that same thing happened to him to scientists um, with green sleeves records and VP records um, where they basically stole his music um, and he hasn't gotten compensated. And so this is an issue that I've often talked about with, with him and with other artists too. And maybe when we do our next interview, I would very much like to talk to you about some of the music that has been, that you feel that people have not properly compensated you for and also not properly attributed, you know, giving you the proper credit for. And then also when we talk next time, let's talk a little bit more about the, the failure to honor artists like yourself and so many other people in, 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 in who, who made the music what it is. So. Yeah, man, because you see, all of my career, of my lifetime is what them doing me. No money from Studio One. This guy named um, 
Night Talk record with that same album you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing from him. No, no, not all. Not him zinc. Yeah? This guy named, uh, this guy named Right Coast in England, Wise Man album, same thing. Wow. They have another album named from um, Shaka in yeah. England, put out an album with me. And he, not like that. No, no money, nothing zinc. You see? Not even, not like, even zinc. For me like, oh, you see, ticks live on dark. Wow. Like a leeches. Wow. Parasites. Parasites. Yeah. Blood suckers. You know? Blood suckers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All of these people. Yeah. Up to some people, I don't even know where they come from. If it's Mars, uh, whatever hell them, 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 uh, where them, them belong or come from, I don't even know them. Some mm -hmm. of them. Some of them, you know, and them do the same thing. They don't care. Winston Jarrett, them, them say me dead. Oh, man. They mean talk, say me dead. Well, Winston, you're not dead. You, you're not. You're not dead, and you're very much alive. And I hope we keep. We want to keep but you that. But they must be dead because they must see no liar come off of them. Yeah. And then pay up all their money. They want. Want them forgive me. Me don't even own a bicycle. Not even a tricycle. Hmm. You understand? Wow. Yeah. Them don't know. Say me have to pay my bills too. Yeah. You understand? And my life. Belongs to Ja. That's why in my life, I put Ja first. But me I tell all of them, people out in the world, if you can't be good, be careful. Hmm. And I'm waiting. I am waiting for the world to change. Respect, Winston. Right now, I am waiting for the world to change. Well, I hope it. I hope it does, Winston. I hope it does. And let's. You see, uh, let's... My, you see my fans, them. Yeah. I have to big them up because them support me and love me for the music when me deliver. And why me do that is a message me give them like food for thought for this many many years, and that's what keeping them alive. Winston, I am so. I am so thankful for you. You. And ten star the general. He gave me, I, he gave I, me an inter interview uh, just two days ago. Here, I, yeah. I am. Uh, I'm so thankful for you, Winston. And if we were together, um, I would be able to give you the big, you know, fist bump and <laughs> and, and tell and tell you, you know, thank you so much. But we'll talk. I'm sure we're going to see each other again. I, I know that that the God and Ja. We'll put us together in the same room at some point. Yeah, man, it's not the end of the world, man. And it's yeah. not the end of the day. We're going to do more things, man. Believe okay, Winston. Because well, Winston. drives into the mix. Thank you so much, Winston. Yeah. And, and, and tell your wife, Patsy, I say thank you. And we'll talk again, okay? Yeah, she says thank you very much. Yeah. Winston, thank you so much. And we'll talk soon. Take care, my friend. Okay, one love and your guide and protect you and your family. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye, Winston. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.